Yo, what's up guys? It's Talent. Today I'm going to be teaching you guys a strategy and how to play in jungle to get an insane amount of MVPs. You can see all of the games that I'm playing jungle, I have 18 straight MVP or SVPs. So you can see the first three games, two Zen Zhao games, and then this Jace jungle game. And then I was auto fill uh, top lane for these two Fiora games. After that, you see straight SVP, MVP only playing jungle, auto fill again that one game. But apart from that, 18 straight MVP or SVPs on jungle only. I want to teach you guys how to play selfishly as a jungler, but I do want to teach you the downsides and upsides of it as well. So I'm going to go through a replay to really exemplify how selfishly I play in jungle, especially in solo queue. I do want to, uh, disclaimer guys, this is not always the best way to play, and I'm going to talk about that more in the video. So please stay tuned so that I can fully explain the good and bad parts about this strategy. Uh, but again, 18 straight games of SVP MVP. If you want to be carrying your games like this, watch the rest of the video. And I'd quickly like to mention as well, guys, this is at 15 mark Master Elo, which is in the top 1% right now. Um, this is low early on in the season, so Master is more similar to Grandmaster or Challenger later on in the season. So there's very high Elo players that I'm playing against. Um, but yeah, let's get right into the video. All right, guys, so for this video, I'm just going to go through a replay of one of my games that's actually a loss. I'm going to explain to you guys the downsides and upsides of the strategy. And basically, the first thing to keep in mind is that I'm playing very selfishly. I'm very much playing for myself with the strategy because solo queue, I don't trust my teammates. So the goal is to really carry on my own. So to do this, champions are the first thing I should talk about. What type of champion should you play to 1v9 games? The type of champion you should be playing is a champion who is very good in team fights, able to really, if they get strong, 1v9 team fights, but also has potential to gank so that you can get early leads. So a good early skirmishing champion, Xin Zhao, Vi, Volibear, any champion that's beefy, good in team fights, but still good in early skirmishes and at ganking uh, champions early on in the game so that you have multiple ways to get leads for yourself. So the upsides of the strategy are that you, the whole game, is in your hands the downsides of the strategy is that the whole game is in your hands and what i mean by that is if you make one or two mistakes when you are the whole carry of your team you will just lose the game outright and it might feel frustrating you might be blaming your teammates but in reality it's because you choose to play this way rather than ganking for your teammates a lot that you'll end up in a situation where it's either you win because you're, you're really good and you're carrying or you lose because you just can't carry hard enough and so this strategy allows you improve allows you to improve really fast because obviously if you're always you know all of the pressures on you you're the one who has to hit the smites you have to do all the damage you have to tank all the damage you have to do everything you will learn a lot more a lot quicker than otherwise if you were playing jungle like a normal person so Starting off, like going through the strategy again, I'm clearing my full red side. After that, I typically would look for a mid gank, but because my lanes were losing so early on, I instead decided to just go for full clear. So here then they try to invade me, and because of this stupid invade, we end up getting a kill onto the Blitzcrank, getting myself that early lead. Oftentimes, I'll look for a mid gank right as I clear my full red side. Level 3, I'll be completely fine with using my flash, even fine with trading a kill potentially, getting that gold onto myself. Obviously, ideally, I just get the kill or I at least force the enemy flash in mid so that I can regank them at round level 5. But regardless, just looking for that early kill in mid lane. However, in this game, I noticed that I had Kale, hard losing lane, Katarina, hard losing lane, and then my bot lane was also hard losing. So for those reasons, I just decided to full clear because I had no prio for any objective. So I was willing to give up that scuttle. However, the Pantheon tried to invade me, giving me a free kill uh, on the Blitzcrank. So now moving on, I'm again just looking for farm, and I'm only ganking when it's convenient for me. So here, I'm looking for a possible bot gank if it ends up uh, occurring, just because I'm already here clearing my camps. But if nothing happens, I'm just going to go back to clearing pretty much as soon as the next camp spawns. I don't want to waste time. My goal is just to look for kills and get myself really strong. Again, the strategy is really reliant on yourself. Your teammates don't matter as much in this. It's just all about you and you carrying, which again, does make it harder for your teammates to play. So even if I have really good stat lines, the reason that seven of these 18 games I lost is because a lot of times I'm making crucial mistakes in the late game when I'm really fed, leading to these things. But again, you see the volley bear is over aggressing and that's leading to me getting another easy kill. I'm not worrying about the volley bear getting that gold lead, getting the turret plates and doing really well and getting a lot of gold from the kill i'm just worried about what i can gain from it so you can see i end up gaining a kill now i already have 3,000 gold but the enemy top laner and the enemy bot lane they're all strong so my opponents are strong but i'm also very strong so again this just leads to because of the fact that i am playing a champion like 
Zen Zhao. In the team fights, I can really 1v9 very well because my champion, he has CC, he has really, really tanky, he's really tanky, especially with the ultimate. Um, he just has a lot of abilities to carry games, he has a lot of damage as well. You can see again, I'm wasting my flash all to go for another kill onto the uh, Karma there. I'm using my teammates making a lot of mistakes in lane as kind of bait for me getting killed. So you saw all of these ganks, both of the ganks, it ends up, my teammates lose a lot, they either lose turret plates or they die for them. But I do get the kills, and the kills go on to me. What does that mean? It means that I have the potential to carry later on if I play the team fights really well. But if I make the mistakes, then we're screwed because it, all the gold is on me. So this is really good when you feel like you have a lot of losing lanes, or you don't feel like you trust your teammates enough to carry. So especially in low elo, I really recommend these strategies. As you get higher up, people will exploit this more. They'll gank your lanes. They'll make your lanes unplayable. But early on, or really even high elos, but especially in lower elos, doing this just eliminates you know the factor of your teammates whatever they're doing doesn't matter it won't affect your game if you play well you play solid you will win a majority of your games playing like this but you do have to be playing really well in the team fights playing really well making good macro decisions and everything like this um so you can see i'll often value herald too here so the only time that i'll value dragon when playing like this is when my bot lane ends up winning anyways so if my bot lane ends up winning their lane that is when I might end up playing for Dragon, but apart from that, I'm almost always going to go for Herald. Now, if I have three losing lanes, I'll just try to go for the opposite objective of my enemy, because if the enemy jungler is going Herald, I'm not going to be able to contest that if all of my lanes are losing really hard. But you can see here, I'm just focused on getting the Herald. That's all I really care about. Now, the Kale does end up stealing it, unfortunately, um, but either way, he's going to drop it here, and I'm still going to get the plates for it, so it doesn't really matter in the end. But again, valuing that Herald gets you more gold and really allows you to carry even on like later on in the game. Just all of all you're thinking about with the strategy is just getting gold onto yourself. That's basically what I have to you know, have you guys acknowledge. You can see here I'm looking for their Gromp. I'm seeing if their blue side's up, but then it ends up not being up. If their blue side's up when I'm taking the Herald, then I would also take their blue side at the same time because they'll be distracted on the dragon. Dragon is a great distraction so that they'll be stuck there for a while, and you can just take their full blue side and get more gold onto yourself. Once again, you see I am just farming. My teammate might be dying in mid lane. I don't care. I want gold on myself because I am the carry of this game. And I'm really only valuing that and really nothing else. Again, you can see here, if there's a kill opportunity, I'll go for it. But I'm not going to, you know, hold my breath. And another thing about the strategy, guys, is usually in solo queue, your teammates are, are either, you know, winning lane or losing lane. It's kind of, there's... There's not too many opportunities where you're going to change the outcome of that because if you have a bad teammate, even if you give them a kill, you can feel they often throw it away or whatever, right? I understand that. I agree. It feels really frustrating. Sometimes they just throw away the leads you give them. So this way, when you have the better laner, they're just going to win their lane anyways. But when you have the worst laner, they're just going to lose their lane anyways. So why worry about ganking it when you don't have, you know, a real easy way to gank it? Like you're not already close farming so, uh, your camps or something like that. You know, I, I just don't overvalue the ganking because I feel when I have a good player, they're going to win lane anyways, usually. When I have a bad player, they're usually going to lose lane anyways. So instead, I'm just looking for the ganks when it's, you know, convenient for me. And then I'm going for my camps as well here now. So you can see again, I could possibly run to mid there, but instead I'm going to worry about getting my camps first. And then once it looks more like there's a possible kill, that's when I'll go for it. So you can see I'm kind of looking, but I really waste only like two seconds looking and I realize nothing is going to happen so I go right back to farming getting myself more gold getting strong for the team fights and trying to carry them and when your teammates are winning lane this strategy is really easy because if they're all winning lane and then you're farming up and getting strong everyone on your team is strong from your teammates to you but sometimes you can change it up and uh, end up trying to you know play more for your teammates when you notice that they're good now here I go a bit too aggressive I tried to kind of be the hero here I thought that maybe with the kill ultimate we'd end up getting a kill but we don't we do get blitzcrank's flash but in the end my teammate dies and we're gonna see it kind of turns into a bit of a mess here i think kale ends up dying which is unfortunate i think my teammate might end up getting hooked so two people die and then we still look for the possible kills ash gets one ash gets a second one here and so it ends up with like a two for two i think it might they might die as well so like a two for three not a great situation a bit too aggressive by me and that's another thing guys when you're making these okay and the volley bear shows up out of nowhere i go to farm my camp that volley bear jump scared the heck out of me that was definitely surprising but you can see you know if you make these mistakes you're giving away a big shutdown i have four kills the volley bear now gets some because i'm making a mistake and i go to aggro and waste my resources and kill my teammates because i went too far so when you make these mistakes it is a lot more uh problematic than if you just have like one or two deaths 
and then or like i mean one or two kills and then you know you die and you're not the most valuable member of your team you're not hard carrying it's not as big of a deal but when you die with this strategy it's a lot bigger of a deal so it really is about if you like i feel like you improve really well with the strategy because when you're playing really selfishly you have you get put through all points of the game you have to play the early game well to get a lot of gold under yourself you have to play the later parts of the game well because you're the carry so you have to not only die but you have to get maximum damage out in the fights or else you're not going to win because you're the damage dealer you have to tank as much as possible because you're also going to be really tanky with your items so you really do have to play extremely well um, mechanically speaking and in fights and everything and you have to play smart but again i know a lot of people like to have control over their games so this is a great way to feel like you have more control just taking as much advantage of any opportunity you have to get gold under yourself even taking the enemy side waves and everything like that looking for the 1v1s on the enemy jungler when you can just in general playing very selfishly and again I, I i have said this a few times but i want to reiterate this is not always the best way to play but i do want to say here guys um actually i want to rewind this so i'm sorry about that i'm going to rewind this because i want to talk about this what i did here because i think this play was actually really good so if you look at this situation we're losing the game really hard my team i know that there's zero way we're ever going to win a fight the dragon is spawning soon so what do i decide instead of playing for the dragon i'm going to play for even more gold onto myself and my teammates so we're going to push this lane and we're going to force them to either come for us and try to fight us while we try to get the tower or they go for the dragon this will lead to them being disjointed and them not all being together for an easy fight for us so i'm creating a fight opportunity on our terms rather than at the dragon where i know we will lose the fight because we are down way too much gold so you can see we forced the pantheon all out here Pantheon ends up dying, I believe, quite soon. And so we end up getting kills onto ourselves and forcing a good fight for us on our terms rather than trying to fight the enemy at Dragon, which would be a lot worse for us. Now, it doesn't turn out perfectly because we are behind, but this would be much better than if we went to Dragon and just got team wiped because we're so far behind. Uh, so definitely much, much more valuable to play for other parts of the, the map when you are down trying to trade sides of the map, like giving them the Dragon so that you can fight on, on you know, going for the turret or something like that is definitely a better play in this situation now it didn't work out because i do think my teammates did not play this very well but it happens and again this was the best that making the best out of a bad situation is kind of like what i would call it and so now here you're going to see again we're just kind of going to pressure mid we just want to pressure other parts of the map not just going for the dragon because i know we can't really fight the dragon so it's not going to be my goal here and another problem with the strategy is you're often giving first dragon for herald and what does that mean it means that if you lose the second dragon they get a lot of buffs which is very problematic now you're going to see they're going to jump on me here but i do believe i survive with the kale ult and uh, with the gargoyle with the ultimate everything so we end up getting a couple kills very nice ash arrow there and so this fight ends up going pretty well for us again like i'm strong so i can often win fights very well and we team wipe them so again fighting on our terms making them fight us in mid lane fight us in bot lane over the turrets rather than the dragon obviously a bit of luck involved my opponents made mistakes we made mistakes it was a bit sloppy but in the end it got the job done and now you can see i'm going straight to invading everyone on the enemy team is dead so i am definitely just going to invade and take their jungle and get get even more gold on myself and again this also leads to greed on backs you can see i have 3,000 gold and i've not backed yet and this is greedy and risky because if someone fights me and i don't have 300 gold or 3,000 gold spent well then i'm going to die because i'm not strong enough to fight them with all that missing gold but if i'm able to get all this gold i'm greeting the extra gold from their camps i'm greeting the lane i'm greeting my farming this allows me to become very strong and there's no objective up so there's no real worry about losing more than just a life or two um from this kind of over farming and not backing yet so you can see here again i'm spending a lot of time on the map rather than backing which sometimes isn't good but again because there was no real objective or anything to lose it was perfectly fine for me to do in this scenario and i'm going to get a, hu a huge power spike once i do back 4,000 gold here you see i have 11,000 gold no one on the enemy team apart from their adc even has 10,000 yet you can just see how much i'm able to possibly 1v9 and again it creates a very strong strength for you guys in the jungle getting all this gold but it does create strengths on other parts of the map like the enemy adc gets a lot stronger because i wasn't really ganking them or helping them out too much so it definitely leads to these kind of big disparities in gold but one way to counteract this is to itemize against that carry so i could have potentially gone for a random omen here to make caitlin's crits do less damage or her crits heal me rather and then they would also um slow her attack speed and i would have armor against that so that would have been a good potential way to kind of nullify their strength there instead i ended up going for the sterics gauge for the extra damage and um, the shielding and everything which is still fine item choice overall and you can see here i have the sterics gauge so i want to back if i can but unfortunately i do get hooked here 
I just have to ult away and then we just run away. I want to back, but I'm scared they're going to go for Baron, so that's kind of why I'm not ending up backing, and then they do end up starting the Baron, so we're going to try to pressure him here and see what ends up happening at this Baron fight, kind of hoping. I mean, they're 50 50 it. They're hoping that they hit the smite. We're hoping we hit it. We'll kind of see what ends up happening in this fight as we go on. And then you guys are going to see here, it's a mess, but we do end up getting it. And then we get the triple kill. And unfortunately, I get greedy here. I go for the penta. I, I saw blood in the water, guys. I wanted that penta kill. It was too greedy of me. If I waited for my ultimate to come out and I was patient, we would have won this fight. If I just backed up or if that Asher hit, we also would have won the fight, unfortunately. But again, we did get the Baron. It's not too bad. Once again, I make one mistake and it leads to a big, big problem. You can see both of my deaths in this game are very problematic. And when you don't play perfectly with the strategy, it's definitely very punishing. Again, if I didn't greed and I waited for my ultimate to come back up, I probably would have pented them there. Or at least survived with the Baron and been able to get a lot on the, the map, a lot of gold. I probably could have gone top, gotten the turret, taken their top side jungle, and all of that. And I would be even stronger in this game. But regardless of that fact, I'm still very strong. We have the Baron now. And this is kind of our last stand. We have a scaling comp with the Ash, Senna, Kale, Katarina. They're really all good scaling champions. And because I have so much gold on myself, I'm also really good in, at this point in the game, of course. So at this point, we're kind of relying on our scaling, on the fact that I'm really strong to carry the last fight. But we'll see how that ends up turning out. I, I did say that we lose this game. I don't remember exactly how it goes, though. So we'll see um, more of the exact details of what goes on. But once again, I mean, if you do make a mistake or two, it's very punishing. So that's definitely unfortunate but it is what it is it kind of comes with the nature of playing this way once again i'm focusing back on my farming uh and my teammates end up dying here which is really bad by them definitely should not be dying here and so yeah now i remember so two of my teammates end up dying here which i can't really control but because they do die at this point in the game it kind of means that we can't pressure the dragons so we just lose three dragons for free uh very unfortunate not much i could do about that but once again if i hadn't made those two earlier mistakes we probably wouldn't be in this position and we'd be winning anyways Though it nonetheless is a bit frustrating that they ended up dying like that. And sometimes it happens and your teammates just kind of throw like that and there's not much you can do about it. I was definitely pretty frustrated at this point. But again, it, it, it is what it is. Happens. Nobody plays perfect. Uh, so at this point, we're just kind of scaling again. We're, we're trying not to die. I do try to tank the Pantheon and the Pantheon does end up getting the kill. And I think I die here in the end. So yeah, I get greedy. I die. Again, I go too far forward and I try to force when I shouldn't which leads to us losing the fight but it doesn't turn out too poorly i don't know i think we do end up all dying here but you can see again just a few small mistakes leading to the losses but overall this strategy led to me getting 18 mvp such svps in a row i think i was 11 and 7 on that stretch of mvps and svps so still leads to a good win rate even i'm playing in a, again master at this point in the season is pretty high elo playing against pretty good players this definitely works even better in lower elos so i do recommend trying out playing jungle this way again picking up a champion like Xin Zhao by uh really any beefy volley bear like any beefy champion that has a lot of tankiness a lot of damage good early game ganking but can still play well in the late game those types of champions I think are really good for this even playing those carries like Kha'Zix and everything can play this way really well so I hope you guys were able to learn a bit from this let me know what you think about this strategy versus kind of playing more selfless more for your team let me know how you play and what kind of works for you when you play jungle and uh anyways i hope you guys enjoyed the video and i'll see you later